But joining us now for more on this market action, we've got Jackie Cavanaugh, who is the portfolio manager over at Putnam Focused Equity Fund. Jackie, thanks for joining us on the show and hopping into the chat here. You see the CPI reading that comes out this morning. What goes through your head? I did see it. Thank you very much for having me. Listen, it was a good reading. It was a good step down. It was a positive surprise to the market, as you're clearly seeing in today's average move. Um, so I think for the Fed, it's a good sign, but I don't think it's still yet enough. I think you're starting to circle around what the terminal level will probably be, which is around five, maybe five and a half percent. Um, but I think like your former guest said, the consumer remains stunningly strong. Cash balances remain very high. The job market is very, very robust, um, tight. I mean, for most of my career, 5% was considered full employment, and we're sitting here at 37 And so while I think this is good news, I think the Fed is still going to stay the course, maybe not at the pace that we've seen, but they're going to have to stay the course. And I think they're going to have to stay the course maybe longer than the market is currently expecting. When I came up, the market was expecting you know, the last hike in June and then the first cut starting in September of this coming year. And I just think that still remains way too fast. You've got to, unfortunately, we don't like to see it. You have to do some damage to the jobs market to really get inflation back to where I think the Fed wants to see it. Well, Jackie, you think the market is just premature uh, in expecting, at least from this morning's market move, that the Fed does a 50 basis point rate hike next, or do they stay the course with another 75 basis point hike? I don't think they're premature on the 50. I think you are going to see the pace. I mean, we don't know. I don't know for certain, but you are going to see the pace of the hike slowing. Um, and I think we're getting closer to where we're probably going to end up, which is, you know, a five, a five and a half on the Fed funds. I think where the market has it wrong still is the duration of how long we have to stay there, right? Like I said, they're already pricing in the first hike kind of in the back half of 20, I mean, pardon me, the first cut in the back half of 23. That's just too fast. The job market is too strong. We're coming from too strong a level for the consumer with their spending capability, with the excess cash they have on deposit, the strength and the availability of the jobs. They're getting their wage hikes now. No, they haven't caught up with inflation, but that gap is closing in terms of wage hikes versus inflation. So you just still have too strong of a job market to really be anticipating this pivot to cutting in September. So I think that's where the market is maybe still overly optimistic in terms of the duration of how long the Fed has to stay tight and stay high to really wring the excesses out of the system. You fast forward to the midpoint of next year, say July 2023. What's the economy actually look like at that point in time? And, and has the Fed achieved its goal? I think the Fed will have reached its goal on the Fed funds rate by then. I would anticipate that. I think the economy will be slowing for sure. I think you will have job losses. You've already started to see it. Um, you will likely have housing, which you've started to see housing start to roll. Affordability is incredibly tight right now on the housing market. So you're going to start to see damage, I think, in the real economy. The problem is I think there's still a lot of wood to chop. Based on our analysis here at Putnam, the consumer still has about 14 months of excess cash to spend down before you get back to the pre-pandemic levels of cash deposits. So you have a lot of support for the consumer. So you'll start to see signs of weakening, but I don't anticipate that you're going to be where you need to be or really anywhere close by July to get the inflation rate down to that you know, two, maybe it doesn't have to be two, but below three, which is where I think the Fed wants to see it. Jackie, uh, in, in this backdrop, in this type of environment, then what portfolio moves you're making? Well, so it's interesting you were talking about the um, cuts to the S&P 500 earnings estimates. And I think that you have to be really thoughtful about digging in underneath the big sector categories and what's happening underneath. We're still really positive on the banks and the big banks in particular for a number of reasons. One, my comment on duration, right? So our rates are going higher, we know that, but they're gonna hang out there longer than maybe the market's currently anticipating. So as a result, if you're a big US money center bank, you're gonna have excess net interest revenue for an extended period of time 
longer than where we are today, I believe, with estimates. On top of which, you have credit that is just incredibly strong. I mean, the credit levels of the losses and what they're seeing for charge-offs and delinquencies remain pretty close to all-time lows. So yes, you're gonna have normalization in that, but you're gonna have excess revenue from net interest margin expansion and then sitting there. Your costs will go up in your credit costs, but they're just going to normalize. So the products are priced for that. And then finally, on the other side, I think it's really unlikely we go back to zero interest rate regime, right? Which is where the banks have been for the past decade. So maybe you go back to two and a half, three percent on Fed funds, which is the long term average. That's a good environment for banks. So excess earning on the revenue side, reasonable credit losses plus valuations that are pretty compelling. So I think there you have opportunity and scope for earnings upward revisions as opposed to the downward we're seeing in other parts of the market. Jackie Cavanaugh, Portfolio Manager at the Putnam Focused Equity Fund. Good to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.